Hey there everyone, Aish here, back again with another video. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the two more topics, which are again, belongs to the same category of type narrowing. And the first one is easy. The second one takes a couple of minutes to actually adjust, but it's also easy. Not to worry, I'm here, everything is going to be easy. So not to worry on that part. I hope you are enjoying the series. If yes, do share it up with all of your friends and hit that subscribe in case you want to. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the two more type of how we can narrow down the type. This entire portion of the series is about how we can go into the more preciseness of the type so that we can take better action. And that's what the TypeScript is all about, getting the types all narrowed down. So let me walk you through with the uh, documentation again and these all examples that we'll be talking through. Some portion of these examples come from the documentation, but I have modified them a little bit for the easier understanding. But yes, the source is always documentation. So the next in the line is the instance of. So this is how further down you can narrow down the things. And they, yes, do mention the prototype and all of that. But the idea is the focus of your attention should be on anything that is or that can be constructed with the new keyword. That's where this instance of actually comes into the picture. So uh, this is a common keyword. It's something that is obviously uh, there. So you can just go ahead and check out anything is X is an instant of date. So uh, anything just you can use new keyword like we create a lot of classes. We can also create arrays with the new keyword. We can create objects with the new keyword. All of that that can be find out. I'll just borrow this code into the code editor so I can just show you a little bit more. So we have gone through with this one. So this is an instance of. Now again, in the value they say is, hey, this is a parameter and all of that. We'll just get rid of that because we don't need this. Uh, parameter. We don't need this part. Let's uh, let's adjust this code a little bit so that it's easier to understand. And uh, there we go. All right. So what this function is doing, it's a log value. Now notice here, this x can be a date or can be a string. So how can we find a date? Because remember, date can be easily created. Any type of variable can be created just by saying new and then we create a date just like that. A new date is being created. Similar to that, you can actually go ahead and create an array like this. So anything that uses this Q new keyword is uh, there and this keyword instance of is almost like, not literally, but almost like type of. Type of checks you for the default types. Instance of check you whether this object was an instance of some class or maybe some uh, something like that. So here we check whether the X is an instance of date. So it just returns a true. If that returns a true, we are able to further narrow it down. Now notice here, if I come up here, we are 100% sure that X is going to be a date in this case. And in the other case, it's going to be a string. So yes, this is also a valuable keyword uh, where the type of doesn't really cut through there. You can check whether this is instance of. And again, remember from the docs, it can only be used where there is a new keyword that there is a potential of having a new keyword. So this is easy part. Now coming up to the part, which is a little bit tricky, which is the type predicates. Okay, uh, this is where TypeScript has nothing to do. It's a bit of a logical flaw. Not flaw, I wouldn't say, but a logical uh, kind of a flow that goes through and which sometimes matches and it introduces a new set of keyword. Let me show you. And again, we're going to be using the same example that is given up here, pet fish and all of that. So we're ju just going to literally line by line write this keyword, but then we're only going to write this much. And then to understand it, we are going to use our own functions. Okay. But first let's go ahead and use this one. So we're going to go ahead and say function. And uh, this function, there we go. In this function, we're going to say get food. There we go. And before we actually go ahead and define this get food and stuff, we need to actually have a fish. So again, this is all coming up from the documentation, not making anything up. <laughs> so there we go. So this is a fish and we're defining a type of it, which is going to be like this. And we're going to say that, hey, you are going to have a method of swim. And this is going to be a method like that. This is not going to return anything. So we're going to go ahead and say void. So this is really simple. We're going to go ahead and put a semicolon, duplicate that. This is not a fish. This is a bird. And a bird don't swim. They actually fly. So we're going to have a fly method. Now we have two types. Just like we had interface, we could have type. Again, both the same values. And based on this, now we can use an example that was given to us in documentation. So we're going to go ahead and create a method which says is fish. So obviously, just like we had method like is admin, this is a method which is going to validate whether the input value was given is a fish or not. Really simple. Uh, it could be any variable. Well, whatever you want to say. 
it could be either a fish or it could be a bird. So these are two values. Now what we want that this function should return us a true or false value. Now how they do it in the documentation is a little bit of a type casting, pet as fish and all of that. So let me walk you through. So what they do is first they say that pet, let's cast this as fish. So just like that, let's wrap this up inside a parenthesis. Once you actually do this, then they try to check the method. So fish has a method of dot swim. And if that method exists, that means it cannot be unidentified. So we're going to say if that is not equal to undefined. Did I say it unidentified? I mean to say undefined. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to simply go ahead and say return there. All right, so really simple, yet a little bit more of the code that is involved. But here we are saying pet is a fish. If it has a method of dot swim uh, that is uh, not undefined, then true, it is a fish. So that is exactly what they are doing. And they are exactly saying like this. But things actually change a little bit. So let's try to use this this much. So far, we have got the code from the documentation, but let's try to implement that. So further down the road, I try to get some food for the fish. So let's go ahead and get some food for the fish. And I know that the food is different for fish and for birds so pet is going to be type of either fish that might come or it could be a bird all right now since i have the access of this method which is is fish i can use an if and else condition here i can go ahead and simply say is fish which is a method available to me and i can pass on this pet here okay so far no problem and if that is the case, then here, if I go on to line 66, I'm 100% sure that whatever the value of the pet comes up, that has already been identified for true for the fish case. Now, let's go ahead and say that if this is the case, then we are going to return as a fish uh, food. And if not, then obviously it is a bird. So we are going to go ahead and return. Uh, this is a bird food. I don't know what to call it, fish. In. But I'll also say this pet here. Now, in theory, if we have defined it so well, and we have done this so much, this is coming up directly from the documentation. By the time we reach line 66, the pet should be identified as truly as fish. And on the line 69, it should be identified truly as bird. But that is not the case. If I hover over this pet, it is still confused. TypeScript is still confused whether this is a fish or a bird. Here also goes same that it is a fish or a bird. So still, the value or the type of the value is not being identified. Although it is not giving us any error, it will still work as it is fine. But this method is truly not behaving because what this method is returning is a true and false value, which is a Boolean in, in, the, in the case. So returning a Boolean, that is fine. Notice here, it is returning a Boolean. It is not returning me a type of fish or a bird. Okay, so what does the documentation says? Documentation says that you can use pet is fish. So you can, instead of returning a boolean, you can use the syntax of pet is fish. That means you are type casting it as a particular type. For example, I can come up here since here on the line number 60, I'm 100% sure that if this returns as true, then I'm sure the return type is fish. And again, you have to use a colon here. My bad. There we go. So this is a bit of a new syntax, but now you get the idea. The true value returning Boolean is not going to cut through in this special case. But if you go ahead and return the type, which could be fish or anything else in your case, is now a guarantee that we are returning truly not as true, but actually as a fish. When I come here, now we are identifying that we are returning a fish or we are returning a bird. I guess this is a little bit of a weird syntax, but this is fantastic how they have implemented it. Mind boggling. But really, really, I, I absolutely love that, how they have defined it. Uh, yes, the documentation is also almost like that, but I have just tried to break it down. This one is uh, not so great explanatory. I've just modified this example. But again, everything is coming from the documentation. We don't learn anything from elsewhere. It's just documentation. So I hope you have enjoyed this one. I'm super happy that you are. Hit that subscribe button and let's catch up in the next one.